All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Office Hours. It is Thursday, February 24th. Um, and with us today, we have Abby on the call that's going to present on PowerPoint. My name is Victoria, and I am joined by my lovely co host. I'm Andrea. I'm Garrett. All right. And we will let you get started, Abby. OK, awesome. Hey, guys, my name is Abby Roberts. I am the new Microsoft Learning Consultant for the Georgia area. Um, so I am um, I've been watching the Microsoft uh, office hours for a couple months. Um, I joined the MLC team in October and then went on maternity leave in November and am back now. So I'm sorry if you hear my um, tiny coworker in the back. Um, hopefully she will um, cooperate. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started today. We're going to be talking about PowerPoint, but not just like the general um, what, you know, here are the basics of PowerPoint. This is um, not your mama's PowerPoint. So, I am going to put something up that um, I'm a teacher at heart. I'm coming from the classroom. So, um, of course, I love some participation. If you can drop in the chat. What is your favorite PowerPoint tool or feature? And it's coming up. What is your favorite PowerPoint tool or feature? Give a second or two. Oh, yes, the Enhanced Morph, Presenter Coach and Designer, Office Timeline. Let me go get my tiny coworker while you guys are doing that. She'll make a guest presentation. Okay. See, design ideas. I love these. OK, so we are going to be going through um, some of these as you continue to um, have ideas dropped in the chat. Um, I would love if you would um, heart things that you use and love or give a thumbs up on things that you want to learn. And yes, this is um, this is Ansley. She is very much a social butterfly. So um, she is joining us. Um, she doesn't want to be left out. So go back through the chat um, for me and heart some things that you use and love or give a thumbs up on things that you want to learn. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh, that was definitely her. <laughs> OK, love some PowerPoint live, some design ideas. Um, so we are going to look at some things um, that maybe you didn't know, maybe you did know, and you just need a refresher um, on, um, on your PowerPoint skills. Um, and honestly, I did not know a lot of these um, before I met Andrea and sat in on some of her trainings. So um, let's get started. My favorite, I love some good memes. Um, so um, when you're sitting in presentations and you are listening to somebody um, talk and talk and talk, um, you know, I feel these on a very real level. OK, a lot of times this is what we think of when we are um, talking about a PowerPoint um, or when you're thinking of a presentation. Um, Yes, death by PowerPoint, because a lot of times um, people just read what is here and um, so here's some tips and tricks that um, we can move out with the old and in with the new. Some things we're going to talk about today. Um, it is um, 
some of the new things that um, Let's see, some new things that have come out recently. Um, if you follow Mike Tholfson, you probably have seen some of his videos on those. Um, and then I saw somebody mention about Morph earlier, um, and that was a transition, but there is a new way to um, morph shapes. Um, Mike Tholfson, uh, we can drop his name in the chat for you. Um, he is amazing um, to follow on Twitter, YouTube, all of the uh, platforms. I'll drop it for you. And, oh, you got it. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing that uh, we're going to look at our recordings. Um, so we're going to go in and out of this presentation quite a bit because um, yes, I have a um, a slide deck, a presentation to show you, um, but I want to, I'm a very hands-on learner myself, and I want to show you where to find these things. Um, so for the recordings, um, I actually had to ask how to find this um, before. Um, so if you um, are in your, or the ribbon up here at the top, if you right click, and then click customize the ribbon. It will come up with all the different options. You'll want to make sure that record is checked right here on the right hand side and then click OK. Um, there's a ton of different objects or options um, and commands here on the right. You don't need all of them in your PowerPoint, just the ones that you would use most often. But if you hear somebody suggest something, this is the place that you're going to want to check first. And then click OK. And then record is up here at the top. Now, um, why would we want to use screen recording? Um, there are a ton of different reasons. Like I said, I'm coming from the K-12 setting, um, but if we learned anything in the pandemic, we learned the importance of being able to make content available to everyone um, at the times that they need it. Um, I had a lot of fifth grade students that were responsible for helping their um, younger kids during digital learning and during our virtual time. So being able to make presentations available to them, um, the screen recording helps. Um, also, as um, I came from the um, computer, like a computer teacher role or a technology teacher role, and so um, I taught every student it, um, in the class um, every single week. Um, and so I would teach a fifth grade class every single day. And sometimes um, repeating the directions gets really old. So that can be another reason. Um, you can record over your um, entire PowerPoint um, or your entire slide deck. Um, but the one that I want to show you is the screen recording. When you do this, it will allow you to choose um, a segment. So if I wanted to move my box, let's see, select area, and I wanted to record just here, I can select and then click record. And it will record any of those instructions. It'll give me my countdown. So if I'm teaching my students um, how to move things um, around on the screen, you know, my kindergarten babies that don't know how to click and drag, I can um, have them, uh, I could show them a demonstration here um, like that, and then drop down, and it will show me, it will insert that screen recording right into the slide, and I can move it, and it embeds it there. Um, and then we're going to skip over that one looking at time. Okay, so there are a couple ways that you can um, turn a presentation into a video. 
Um, those two options. And I'm going to say here on this slide, we're going to talk about two um, different ways to save your video as a, or to save your PowerPoint as a video. All right. Thanks. Um, so, um, there you go. Um, I, I was like, hold on, Andrea, what? Um, but um, what you can do is you can export it as an MP4, and I'm going to show you that in the next part because that is something new um, that has come out. And then um, you can also save your PowerPoint show um, as a PPSX file, um, and it appears to be full screen. So let's see. Forward. We don't this have to listen to Andrea over and over again. Um, <laughs> the next, uh, within the recording, um, something new that has come out, um, and I believe it is um, only within the desktop client, but I could be incorrect, um, is recording, um, but having the video over top here, it's not the same as the cameo that some of you mentioned, um, but what I love about this um, is, and I had a split screen at the time, so this is what um, I was presenting, and then um, as I can, I can talk over the presentation at the same time. These are my notes at the bottom um, that as I'm talking and recording myself, then um, I'm not just talking out of thin air um, or narrating or reading off the slides, but I am able to um, speak to um, the notes that I have in there. So that is really nice when you are in a presentation um, and you, um, sorry, lost my train of thought. It's really nice when you're in a presentation and um, it's like reading from a teleprompter. So for um, instances like that, where I lose my train of thought, um, it can be really nice to be able to have that prompt there for us. The, oh, I wanna show you where that is. Um, so when you are, uh, that last one that I was talking about, you press this button right here and this screen will come up so that all of the notes that you have typed in at the bottom then become your teleprompter. You can adjust the text size um, and you can, um, if you wanted to, you notice that my background was blurred um, in here. You can adjust that here so that, um, I mean, I'm sitting in my dining room right now um, because of this wiggly monster. And so um, you don't necessarily need to see everything behind me. And it doesn't have the robust features like Teams where you can choose your background. It just allows you to blur it. So that's nice um, when you're teaching virtually and you don't want your students or you don't need to have your boss um, be able to see what's behind you. Um, you can have that option still there. Now, um, the next one, I'm just gonna stay in this part of the presentation right now. The next one is a form that you can embed into your presentation. So say that I send out this slide deck at the end and I want to get, um, for example, your mailing address so that I can send you a thank you card for attending office hours today. Um, that would be like almost or over 100 cards. So sorry, you're not getting one. I like you all, um, but that's a lot. Um, but what I can do is I can enter, this form is embedded into the slide deck. So all I have to do is fill out the form. And if I keep going just by pressing tab, it takes me all the way to the bottom and I can submit it there. So you're not having to drop links in for um, people if you are sending the slide deck to them anyways. Um, that is 
if you were doing that, you would go to insert and we want to insert a new slide. And then you can come up here to forms. And when you insert that, uh, or you, it opens up a window pane um, that um, has all the forms that you have created previously. So, or it should, my computer must be ready to close down for the day. So if I wanted to um, insert this form here, I could, or I could edit it to make it more applicable to the audience that I'm sending it to. Um, so, insert it here and it'll take a second but then that um, will be available for those that need to the next little piece um, is digital inking um, i love this when working with my students um, because then they there are a couple different tools um, yes, Amanda, I believe so, um, that they are only in the desktop version. Good question. Um, when you are, um, under here, under the draw tab, um, there are, of course, our different tools, but one of my favorites is the lasso to be able to ink to a shape or ink to a text. So if I was to, let's see, write my name and I use the lasso function to circle it, then I could have it ink to text and it will auto generate my name as long as it would all be on one line. Um, or um for a heart that is really sloppy so i can lasso it and it would um recognize the shape so this can be good for as an accessibility feature even um for some of the younger um, especially younger students um Again, I'm coming from the elementary school, so that is where a lot of my brain goes when it comes to these tools. Um, but it can, um, oh, I like that, Andy. Um, the stylus does make that um, a lot more robust. The next tool is dictation. Now you've seen um, in the past like 20 minutes how wiggly this monster is, um, or maybe you are um, shoveling food in your mouth in between meetings and you have to prep for um, another, another session. Um, there is the dictation function. So if, I was to go back to home and open up this text box. OK, so then I would click dictate. It turns on and you know that it's on because it has the recording symbol here. It listens to me and will eventually. Pull that information up. I'm going to turn it off and see if it'll catch up with me. So theoretically, that's how it works. Let's get it, see if we can get it caught up. Okay. Well, theoretically, that is how it would work is um, you would see the words that come up here. Yes, um, that is what the wiggly monster um, likes to bring up under the dictate tool. Um, <laughs> um, under the dictate tool, you can um, have. Oh, see, I was earlier talking practicing in Spanish, so here you go. 
this is why it didn't pick me up speaking Spanish. So if I said, oh. Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Okay. Nope, oh. it's not going to work at all, but that's okay. Um, that is, you want to make sure that it's in the correct language, not Canada, um, and it should work. We're going to move on past that. Under slideshow, um, you have a couple different um, things that are, um, <laughs> um, you know what, Jason? It very well could be, and I'm hoping that that is the case. Um, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so a couple things to um, make teams uh, or make your presentations more accessible within PowerPoint. Um, there are a couple things. Number one, um, you notice that um, we have the slide, the translate slides here. Um, that would I would have to go into my customized ribbon again. Like I said, if you can't find it, you're going to find it here in this area. Um, Except it moved. I'm sorry, Abby. Please go ahead and tell um, me. The translation moved to the review tab. Look, see, this is good. And that's my fault. It was my image that I sent her. <laughs> that's OK. This is why I'm glad that you're here. OK, I promise I'm clicking. It's not going. The Victoria, I think you're right. Um, the demo monsters have come over. So it's to the best of us. <laughs> That's OK. Um, one thing that I want to show you guys um, before we have to wrap up, we have like two minutes um, before I have to hand back over is um, the. <laughs> that's why you should just use PowerPoint. Yes, probably. Um, and wrap. Thank you, Andy. Um, but. One thing that I want to show you a lot of times when we are doing um, designs, I'm going to jump down here um, to our design ideas. We want to make our power, our uh, slide decks uh, look professional. Um, and this is one trick that Andrea showed me. Thank you, Andrea. Um, when we um, are a lot of times I get stuck with the basic like uh, I want to make mine look good. Um, so if you go up here to insert and go to pictures and stock images. Then once it loads, um, these are all images that um, within Microsoft you have permissions to be able to use. Um, and I um, used to visit my grandparents in Arizona um, when they lived there. So we'll use a cactus. And when I click insert, should, um, on the side, it came up earlier. Um, if I go to design, and design ideas. Then it'll use the image that you have selected. So whether it's a personal image that you've put in or the stock image, these are um, ideas of how to set up um, your your presentations. Um, so um, we just crammed a ton of uh, PowerPoints, tips and tricks, and I think my little one is getting a little ready to move on. Um, Thank you, Abby, so, so much. Um, sorry I about know that she had at least 12 more things to share with you because I gave her the list 
uh, of things I thought we should cover. And she just did a phenomenal job. We're going to save those other things for the next time uh, we need a, an Abby type session. Um, and so we're just going to keep those on the back burner because there are so many more really amazing things that PowerPoint can do. And we might even pull from that list that you all shared in the chat um, to make sure that we cover all of those, especially the ones that have thumbs up. Um, and of course, we want to we want to see Ansley one more time before we close out today. Oh, she turned her camera off. She's done. All right. There's baby Ansley. Those eyes and those cheeks just make me so happy. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for office hours today. We will see you next week.